Item 116, to consider permitting the use of Fort Williams Park for Family Fun Day on, July, on June 16, 1990, or on June 17, 1990, in case of a rain and taking the necessary action. Do you want to comment on that one, I bet? Actually, uh, I'm, my name is Clint Blood, and I'm chairman of the Fort Williams Commission. And I'd like to comment on item number 116, which is the Family Fun Day using June 16th and June 17th, and item 117, the next one on your agenda, if that's possible, um, project graduation or the graduation of the high school class, which will be using the, the park on the 15th, which is a Friday afternoon. There's been some concern in our committee um, that we have two very worthwhile organizations wanting to use the park on the same weekend. Um, the, we, we feel that the, what comes first is actually the education of our young people and they should have, certainly have the rights to the 15th. And talking with Frank Miles today, the principal of the high school, and also Kara Rubin, who is the chairman of graduation, I learned that they will not be using the fort this year as they have in the past in terms of a chemical-free project graduation party. But rather, they're going to be using the fort to actually graduate at the fort followed by a uh, reception for friends and relatives. Then they will then proceed over to the high school for a lobster bake, I believe, and then go to Mary Meeting uh, up top, Thompson for their evening activities. Meaning that they will be using the fort starting around 2 o'clock on the 15th uh, and then leaving by 7 or 7.30. One of the problems exists is that the Family Fun Day, even though it's scheduled for the 16th or the 17th, they like to have 24 hours lead time to set up all of their booths. And they, they set their booths up in exactly the same place that Project Gra or where the, where the seniors wish to graduate. Currently, they actually, the seniors wish to graduate using the bleachers that we're redoing, which I was pleased to hear. They will be sitting in the bleachers that were uh, the cement bleachers uh, with their parents uh, on, the, on the parade grounds. Well, this really does not allow uh, Family Fun Day to use <coughs> that facility until after 7.30 on that evening. So it was, we passed, passed it at our last committee with the idea that the two groups could work together would be fine. But if there was a conflict that project graduation or the, or the senior class had priority over Family Fun Day on the 15th, just as they should get, remove all of their materials before Family Fun Day on the, on the 16th. It was also hoped that you now have formed a new commission for Family Fun Day, that they might look to some other weekend, such as the second weekend of June or the fourth weekend of June, there would be no conflict that way with, with graduation. It's much <coughs> easier, it seems to us, to move Family Fun Day than it is to move the school calendar in terms of graduation. There was a desire this year to have graduation on Thursday instead of Friday. Um, the senior class vetoed that. Uh, and they would not show up on Thursday. They want to have it on Friday. So that's, we're back to Friday in terms of graduation. So I, we are recommending as a commission that the Family Fund Day have access to the Ford on the 16th and 17th, as well as Project Gra or the senior class having access on the 15th. But I think it should be understood that uh, the two groups hopefully work together, but that Family Fund Day really won't have access to the Ford in terms of the parade grounds until after 7.30 on uh, Friday evening. If that's not worth, doesn't work out for them, then we would be open to another date uh, for them to use the fort. Okay, thank you. Councilor Creel. Uh, Clint, it, it, as I recall, the, uh, this scenario uh, was the same last year. It was the same Friday, Saturday story. Uh, with your recollection, were there specific problems, uh, although I recognize this year the graduation is going to be somewhat different? Uh, no, we don't know of, I haven't heard of any real problems from last year. It, it, it worked out. The problem now is, though, that the time that the Family Fun Day was setting up in the afternoon on Friday, that will not be available to them, and they were setting up exactly where the podium is going to be for graduation this year. So the senior class is doing it different this, this year than we've done in the past several years. Of course, if there's rain, they will not be there. They'll be at the back of the high school. But uh, we, we just wanted to make sure that you knew and that you could pass on to the Family Fun Day Committee that there may be a concern in terms of actually using it on Friday. We're, asked, we're saying they can use it on Saturday and Sunday, but Friday 
is a real concern if they're planning on using it on for setup on the 15th. Thank you, Councilor Tory. Yes, I'd like to ask the manager if he knows that the, if those dates were chosen by Family Fun Day specifically and consciously to avoid other festivals and other conflicts. Yes, it, there were. So, I think so Councilor Greenlaw the, was at the meeting. Well, she the, could what's answer. What's the rationale, Janet? Was there some for that weekend? I was at, that the, at that meeting, and what you have stated is, in fact, one of the cases, one of the reasons they chose to want to have Family Fun Day on June 16th. They, the weekend after that, I believe, is Spring Point Festival. It's all, they did not want to have it any later than that because school is out and people are not thinking, a good number of people are not thinking of staying around Cape Elizabeth. Their thoughts are elsewhere on vacation plans for the summer, you know, either be it short-term or long-term vacation. There was a, con and I'm trying to recall reasons for not having it sooner than that, some of, it, some of which were just other family type commitments. Little League is still in full swing then. School is, is winding down, but it is not over then. And those were some of the concerns. My very clear understanding from the Family Fun Day Committee was that they appreciated what we've heard Clint say tonight. They know certainly what they went through last year. And I think it would be you know, certainly easier that they knowing they can get in by se at 7.30 this year. It's an easier scenario to work with than it was last year time-wise. They did not run into any major problems last year time-wise. And what I heard <coughs> related was there was only one group that had a potential problem with the length of time allowed them for setup. It was not a problem for a lot of the participants in the Family Fun Day um, who have food booths especially or I think it was the, it's the food booth people, and Beth Nolt is very much aware of this. And we did discuss the need for cooperation, as Clint has pointed out this evening, between the two groups who do want to use the fort that weekend. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just wanted to point out to the town council some concern I have, if I may be allowed to speak on item number 117 as well as 116. Either one, sir. OK. To, to this date, we have not received a, a request from uh, the graduation class uh, for any activity. I, uh, I only put this item on the agenda so that the council would be aware of the, the potential conflicts involved. I called the class advisors last Wednesday, I left a message for them to call me, and they have still not returned the phone call. Uh, it has always been the, my understanding, the desire before that request for Fort Williams be channeled through the manager's office and then be disseminated to all members of the Fort Williams Commission and then with a recommend, recommendation to the council uh, and for the representatives of the graduating class to appear before both the commission and before the, the town council. Uh, none of these uh, events have, have yet taken place. Uh, you know, I think the, the idea they have is certainly interesting and you know, certainly doesn't pose a problem, but there is a process of uh, involving the entire, all of the membership of the committee in the decision as well as running it by the department heads uh, to see if uh, they see any problems so they can be involved in the planning. And to date, none of this has been done. So uh, I would encourage you to uh, agree to these in concept, but uh, to uh, await final approval on project graduation until uh, the, the representatives of the class have gone through the customary process. Uh, can I speak to that, Mike? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, project graduation, we did receive a letter in October from Weg Libby asking for the date which we tentatively approved that date in our minutes in, I think, believe it was the October meeting, uh, and asked them to come back. They have contacted me, and they're, they're the first one on the agenda on February 6th. Kara Rubin will be there to speak before we get into our other main business of our, our meeting uh, to do exactly what, what we've asked them to do. But that has not, you did not know that. The town done. office does not have in its records any requests from Weg Libby. Perhaps that went direct to the committee and didn't go through the usual process. But. I have not seen it, and it's not a uh, part of the record. Well, it's in the minutes of the Fort Williams Commission, that's all I can say yeah, at that time. Actually, from the standpoint of the town, in terms of our commission, we have not had a formal request from the, from the uh, Family Fund Day because they were meeting at the same time we had our last meeting, and then Mike heard and we yelled down and said, fine, we'll do it. So, I mean, that's in term, I'm not, we're not concerned about that procedure, uh, but as far as we have a letter in our records from Weg Libby and also uh, uh, they're coming in on uh, February. Next I, I believe I brought the request of the Family Fund Day Committee to the attention of the Commission on that evening. Yes, you did. There was a Later formal on, yeah. request from them to you that evening. Communications. 
as I see it. Going the wrong way, the wrong time, to the wrong people. Okay, has anybody got a comment one way or the other? You heard the recommendations of the manager? Yes, Council Greenlaw. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we permit the use of Fort Williams Park for Family Fun Day on June 16th, 1990, or in case of rain on June 17th, 1990. Second. Been moved and seconded. Anybody got any comment? Any more? All understand the motion? If so, raise your hand. Those opposed? I believe she's six and a half. Okay, we'll move on to item 107. To consider permitting the use of Fort Williams Park for project graduation 1990 and take any necessary action. I would like to make a comment after, if I may, on this before we get started. After they put all those chairs over there for graduation and they're going to be there until 7.30, are they going to cut them out earlier than that? Do you know? No, I don't. So, in my opinion, be a pretty tight schedule if they didn't start before 7.30 or 8 o'clock, get them out of there to let Family Fun Day come in and do anything that day as far as setting up. And these, to me, is some of the things that the department heads and the managers should be exploring to see if you're going to dovetail them both together. I'll admit what you said earlier, it's too bad they all want the same weekend, but it so happens school ends in such and such a day, and they want family fun day before everybody leaves Cape Elizabeth for the summer, except the other summer people coming back into Cape Elizabeth <laughs> to fill it up. Cape Elizabeth people leave to the lake, and outsiders come in and fill the Cape up for the summer, so that's why they want that date. They've been fooling with it for years. Anybody else got a comment? What's your wishes with item 117? Mr. Chairman, I will, I, will attempt, I will attempt a motion. Being that the chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has come forward tonight to express that in his files is a request for the use of the date on June, was it 15th, Friday the 15th? I would so propose that we allow um, the graduation to take place at Fort Williams on June 15th, but I would also like to instruct the manager to please notify the people that are involved as to the proper channel that in subsequent years should be followed in terms of sending the official request to the town manager. But you care to second that? Second. second. Anybody else got a comment on one way or the other? The manager. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I, it's been a little tense and I just have concern and that, you know, when you have advisory committees overseeing certain facilities, certain buildings, uh, you know, when you, when you have an administrator responsible for the building or for the facility, uh, they ought to be the ones that, that are making the arrangements, no more than, you know, in your position, Frank, uh, with the expo. You know, you don't have the advisory committee making the, uh, the particular arrangements. It, it's, it's done through the staff, and I believe that uh, in, in this instance, uh, you know, or any instance with the Ford, it should be done the same way. That's basically where I'm coming from on this issue. Anybody else? Council I, I would still want to hear from the students making a formal request as to how they plan to use the fort on that day, but that we are, by this motion, reserving time during the day for them to use the fort once we uh, have, but we'll expect to hear from them about the particulars of the plan for the day. I agree with you 100% yeah. that they should come forth to the manage because the manager and the department heads is going to take care of the traffic, they're going to take care of the facilities, and they should know what's going on. I will vote for this motion, and I think what's been said here has sent a message out to anyone that's listening that this channels to go through in order to retain Fort Williams. Okay? Everyone understand the motion? If so, raise your hand. Those opposed? So vote. Six to nothing. Item 118, to consider permitting the use of Fort Williams Park for Engine One's Art Show on September the 2nd, 1990, or September the 3rd, 1990, in case of rain, taking necessary action. Now, everybody wants the fort. 
Go ahead, Mr. Manager. Yes, in, in, the interest of, in the interest of consistency, I would ask that this item be tabled until you have a formal letter of request uh, go through the process. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Vote six to nothing. <coughs> We knock one down and pacify the other. <coughs> Moving on to 119. <laughs> to consider establishing pull and headlight <laughs> building committee and take any necessary action. Uh, Councilor Greenlaw, I believe, <laughs> wants to touch this off. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's the desire of the appointments committee that there be established a formal building committee and I would like to amend some of what we, you received in your packets that this be called the port no, can't talk today Portland headlight keepers quarters building committee so that everybody involved will know that we in fact are talking about the keepers quarters building and not the lighthouse structure itself <coughs> this is proposed to be a five-member committee with the project coordinator and the town council chair as of this evening if this passes to be ex officio non-voting members I would like to include that one of the five regular members on this committee be a member of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee the reason for doing that is to promote and ensure coordination between this building committee and the Fort Williams committee. That's all. Would you like me to read anything more? No, I believe that you uh, <laughs> maybe maybe it be nice might be nice to the, read what your charge is mm -hmm. and uh, you do it I do it and uh, people out there might be listening and would be interested in the purpose of the committee is to assist the town council, the project coordinator, and the town manager in implementing the Portland Headlight concept plan adopted by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council on October 11, 1989. The committee charge is to meet with and review plans submitted by the project architect, to coordinate cost elements with fundraising results, to recommend a final layout and design plan to the town council and to assist the town manager and the project coordinator with construction oversight. It is expected that copies of minutes of all meetings would be promptly forwarded to the count, town council and that the plan specified in item number three, the final layout and design plan, shall be submitted to the council no later than June 1, 1990. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody get a comment one way or the other? Council Amaral. Uh, only in the makeup of the committee. Uh, it's my understanding that according to our bylaws, the uh, chairman of the council serves ex as an ex officio member of all our committees. So I think it would be kind of redundant to put that on this, com this one committee in particular. And in fact, if you want to say that the present council chairman will stay on, uh, as an ex officio member, it could mean it would mean that you would have after uh, uh, June first or whenever a new chair is elected, two people uh, serving in uh, ex officio capacities from the council. So I, I don't think it's necessary to include include that the chairman automatically uh, is a, an ex officio member of every committee. Okay. You hear? I think Here's it's worth a good point. We can strike that. Strike that. Establishment. Anybody else? There's someone in the audience, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Oh, excuse me. Didn't recognize you. Um, and I'd like to report what our and I've reported this to Councilor Greenlaw. What? Our feelings is on the Fort Williams Commission regarding the establishment of, of another building uh, commission are. Um, we have had already a group working outside of the uh, Fort Williams Commission uh, in terms of developing and, and deciding on an architect. That process hopefully will be done, I believe, this next Thursday. Um, and that will be the first step. It's, 
it's our belief that we should have more people involved in this process than just the seven people in the Fort Williams Commission or the seven counselors. Um, and in so doing, we've already been in contact, or Henry Adams, is our project director, our coordinator, has been already in touch with uh, people in the community and a person who's going to head up the fundraising and the uh, promotion uh, of raising the funds and the uh, publicity. We're also looking to, and that will develop a committee also in terms of pu pulling people on a fundraising committee. We've also looked in, and are formulating the concept of uh, an artifacts committee or, or a group that would, would primary responsible deciding what's historical is not historical and, and working with the uh, curator hopefully would be hired in a matter of eight or nine months, um, would work with the, cur with the curator. These would all be, as we see it, subcommittees, uh, hopefully using people from the council and people in the community that would report back to not only, obviously, the council, but also to the Fort Williams Commission. Um, we're concerned that we then have one aspect that goes through an official town commission. Um, one of our purposes in our keeper's quarters was to have it be a low impact kind of facility. And if we're, it seems like we're getting, giving it greater and greater status, it's very easy to make something large uh, as far as a building committee. And so we're certainly open to a, a building committee or commission, but we wonder whether or not it's really needed. Uh, it seems that we can use people in the community to oversee the building. Uh, this is not a, a large building uh, situation in the sense that we already have a, a building that's there. We cannot change the outsides. The inside is basically going to be gutted with a few do doorways and uh, uh, keeping the um, chimney. The basic uh, problem is how do we develop the upstairs uh, in terms of a living arrangement. So it isn't uh, like building a new school or a new library or uh, that type of thing. It, it, and we're, from what we understand from the architects, they would be, have everything ready to go this summer with the idea of implementing it uh, in the fall in terms of the interior work. Uh, that's what I understand from our project coordinator. So we have a, had a concern whether or not there really is a need to go through the whole process. We're certainly open to that need, but, we're, but we have a concern. They've answered two other questions. One, we wanted to make sure Henry Adams was an ex officio member and that we also would like to have somebody in the commission Probably Nancy Jackson would be a member of that committee if it was to go into into uh, bec become a reality. Uh, we, and by having that, then we'd get some reports back to the to the to the uh, commission, because as we see it, we we have everyone else reporting back to the commission because you've given us a charge to work and develop this, and then come back and report to you. And if we have the building committee going directly to you and not coming to the to the commission, it seems like we're sort of missing, it's going to get kind of mixed up here a little bit in terms of the future. So that we're attempting to try to involve other people in the community, which I think is one of the major reasons that you're looking at a, a building uh, uh, committee, uh, as we have in the past and we plan to be doing in the future. Okay, thank you. Just a minute. Councilor Tory. Just, just to clarify, the, the committee that's now choosing the architect, what, what is, does that have a name or what are you calling that? We're, we're just calling the architect committee and their, their goal is to choose the architect. And then was, that, it, was, was that its sole purpose and then once it did that it was to disband? Well there's actually one, the idea was that they would then sort of follow up and work obviously with the architects in terms of like a building committee. We hadn't really formed it as a building committee. There is one member who does not want to be on that after they chooses the architect and we thought we would then expand it and maybe pull some people in with construction backgrounds and that type of thing that would work with that committee. But the, the concept behind the commission in this is that Henry's a coordinator, but he's, his job is also to Down the road is should we form another commission to deal and run and oversee the running of Portland Headlight outside of the Fort Williams Park Commission? To me, to us, that's the biggest decision. That's, uh, but that's a different a area. That's not. That's a possibility, in my opinion. Uh, that's, yeah. that's right. Anybody else? Councilor Greelman. Well, I think you know Clint brings up I think a very uh, 
valid concern and I think we've already seen you know a problem this evening that's uh, resulted as a consequence of confusion as to who one is supposed to deal with in terms of uh, you know requesting the use of the fort uh, I would be interested in, in getting our uh, chief executive officers opinion uh, in that uh, Michael's going to have to be dealing with uh, all of these committees uh, anyway uh, I mean is this uh, in your opinion, uh, necessary, essential? Uh, do you see the potential for creating further uh, layers of communication problems? Uh, how, how do you assess the, uh, the whole story, Michael? Uh, as I indicated in a memo I sent to the council recently, uh, I am concerned about the, the multitude of committees. Uh, however, in this particular instance, uh, I think when, for example, when the Appointments Committee looks for the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. They're looking for a broad range of skills and, and talents. Uh, for a building committee, there's a separate, there's a separate need for, for different talents, different skills, different backgrounds. Uh, and, and for that reason, uh, you know, I, I think this would, it would be extremely helpful uh, to, to, have, to have such a committee. Uh, in fact, that's, that's how the Architect Selection Committee came about. Uh, that really f was falling on Henry, Henry Adams and myself to, to go through that process and uh, I, I didn't feel comfortable doing it and wanted a little more help and we formed the ad hoc group to, uh, to interview through the process as, as an administrative committee. But uh, something as important as, as a building committee, uh, you know, it, it's setting long range policies for the community and uh, certainly, uh, you know, ought to be given strong council consideration. Thank you. Councilor Greenlaw. I think some points to make, and as Clint said, he and I have discussed this previously. That's why some of the changes were made tonight that were. Um, one thing that I had not mentioned was that this, if the building committee for the Keeper's Quarters is established, it would, it, the terms of those committee members would expire on December 31 of this year or on the date of substantial completion, whichever was later. This would not be a committee that stayed in place for any other purpose, that it is solely to serve as a building committee. And historically in this town, when we are going through a building project, there has been a committee appointed to deal with the architect and to represent the council in those dealings. This committee also, in my opinion, needs to report to the council because we are dealing with an expenditure of funds, whether they be through fundraising efforts or, in this case, a, what I foresee is the combination of fundraising efforts along with the contribution we've had from the UNAM plus the town contribution. I think those are other reasons for having a building committee and having it report to the council. Thank you. Anybody else? Can, can I ask a question? Do you see the yeah. building committee taking over the fundraising then? No. No, okay. The no. disbursement of funds, they'd be in charge, but not the f actual fundraising. The part of the charge is that they coordinate the cost elements of the construction with the fundraising results. You understand the procedure with, as far as fundraising goes. That's got to come through the council if you're going to use Cape Elizabeth as a name. Oh, yeah. As far as raising funds, that has got to go through this group here. Uh, absolutely. One of the things that we're probably going to be doing is trying to develop a, a list of people who would be on this committee. Uh, okay. Who, and one of those we would like to have would be a, a town councilor uh, okay. beyond that committee. Uh, money begets money, so we're trying to get a... <laughs> Don't you, don't you feel that once you have a member and your coordinator on that committee that you're going to get feedback enough to know what's going on? Well, that's one of the recommendations we had, that there okay. would be, be that. Uh, just that we, our concern was we have an architectural committee. We'll, we'll probably end up having a, for what, lack of a better term, an artifacts committee, uh, a fundraising committee. And all of a sudden, as far as the building is concerned, which is already there, there's a commission. <laughs> You know, uh, do we need to have a commission for fundraising? Do we need to have a commission for artifacts? Do we, you know, uh, that that was a concern that we have. Why pick the building? It's already there. We're not. It's not going to be outside. It's not going to change at all. Uh, in fact, once the architect has his drawings, there isn't that much to do as far as this committee is concerned. In our estimation, the greatest, perhaps, is going to be the other two. In terms of fundraising and the uh, uh, the, the curator and the developing of the museum. I'm beginning to have concerns about the proliferation of committees within your committee 
and, and having people appointed without going through the basic appointment process mm -hmm. that we have in town. Mm -hmm. um, that it's sort of snowballing without our having some sort of control over it. One of the things that uh, Mike has served on the, uh, the architectural one, and we've had uh, Dick McGoldrick and John Houghton have also served on that, in addition to Nancy Jackson and, and Henry Adams, is that on the other, what we, what I, at least we sort of perceive as subcommittees, that we would involve at least one town councilor in each one of those committees. Um, because each is a relatively short duration in terms of a committee. Uh, the fundraising committee isn't something that you look at for five years. It's just as you're talking about in terms of the building committee ending in a specific date, the architectural committee basically is, have, will have completed their job by, on Thursday, hopefully. Go ahead. Yeah, that's all. The, fun, the fundraising committee, really, the whole format and procedure and, the, and your plan has to be Has to come present. before you. Oh, yes. Absolutely. No, no question. Okay. Thank you. Council Amaral? Yeah. I just think that it, uh, it is really important that we use the appointments process when we are setting up committees. Uh, but I, I wish that we had used the process for the selection of the architect as well as the building. Uh, <clears throat> how the building would be renovated because I think that you know those functions are so close we should have had a committee appointed by the council that chose the architect and then went on from there uh, it's going to involve a great deal of expenditure of funds it's a very uh, uh, important issue for the town as a whole and, and I really think we should use the process that's in place to make sure that the committee uh, is reflective of uh, what the elected officials in town uh, want to see happen. Uh, so that, that's where I stand. I think it's, it's critical that we go this route uh, and that we not have committees being spun off uh, for every, every project without, without input from the uh, appointments committee. I, I agree with that 100%. And I just want to add, which I think, in my opinion, is your role. If you need a committee to do something, in my opinion, you should recommend it to the council and that they form a committee. They had 60 names sent in here wanting to do something for the town, and the appointments committee has got to shift through them. So there's quite a few people around here are interested, but I don't think any one of them know that you needed a uh, fundraiser or, or an artifacts, artifacts, or whichever way it goes committee and I think you people should be recommending it to the council that we need a committee of three or four or five to do this and some recommendations. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Now we had a motion here, I believe. And Do we? No, we didn't, excuse me, I'm sorry. To consider establishing a Portland Headlight Billing Committee and take unnecessary action. We had a recommendation, I'm sorry. Who cares to make a motion? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Greenlaw. I'd like to move that we establish the Portland Headlight Keepers Quarters Building Committee as outlined and amended in the item number 119 memo in our packet this evening. Second. Been moved and seconded. Everyone understand the motion? If so, raise your hand. Those opposed? Did I see a vote on the end? Well, you were asking me if I understood the motion. <laughs> yes. You've been asking us that all night. I said, if so, raise your hand. I do understand the motion, okay. but I was not sure I was going to vote. I'm still. Okay. Six to nothing. She voted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. This Chairman, is a democracy. <laughs> I knew you was going to pick me up on that sometime Mr. or another. Chairman, I've been for it. Yes. I just want to make a concluding statement in the spirit of unity between the Council of Fort Williams Advisory and everything else. I think that, Clint, what you're, what you're alluding to is, is absolutely correct, too. There's got to be some, we have to remember there has to be some cohesion as this thing starts to move down the line. And this building committee directly reporting to us still has to be an integral cog because that's just one piece of the whole economic pie here. You're, you all are deciding, you, I mean, you're going to be spending money on artifacts, you're going to be spending money on other things other than building. And I just want to emphasize to you that I feel a spirit of unity between us and you, not, not any division. Mm -hmm. We have to work together. And w there has to be ultimately one group that's pulling it together. Now, you know and we know that that final authority is going to be coming from the council. But nonetheless, more of the day-to-day hands-on is going to have to come through you and make sure that we keep that whole piece of the pie 
in focus so that one little element or one element isn't forgotten or kind of off to the side, you know. Th there's many economic pieces to this, not just the building, and I, I think you're right on that. Let's, let's all of us try to work together towards that to make it a successful project. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Item 120, to consider authorizing the town manager to apply for a coat. Good name. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the state, through its Coastal uh, Planning Grants Program, has available some funds statewide uh, for, for various uh, uh, proposals. Uh, one of the areas we're going to be looking uh, for some money for, uh, as, as has been indicated from the previous discussion, is for the development of a museum at uh, Portland Headlight. I've spoken several times to Mary Boyd. Brummel at the Office of Comprehensive Planning in Augusta, and uh, she certainly thought this project was uh, was an interesting one and it might be worthy of some some funding uh, assistance. Uh, if in fact you received uh, funds, it would have to be uh, matched uh, on a 50-50 basis uh, by the community. Uh, so what I'd like is an authorization to apply for fifty thousand uh, dollars as a waterfront construction project. Uh, with uh, half of the funds to come from, uh, excuse me, with, to be matched with uh, fundraising monies. Uh, before you actually uh, obligated to receive this grant, you would have to commit the, the other, uh, the town share. Anybody you don't do that as of yet. Councilor Greenlaw. Would we be expected to commit that amount in the upcoming fiscal year, or would it be over more than one fiscal year? Uh, it would probably be between uh, August 1990 and uh, probably September or October of 1990. It would be right after the award uh, would be granted. So in one fiscal year? In one fiscal year. <coughs> yeah, but the hope is it would be done through f monies fundraised and not lo local tax dollars. Councilor Tory. I wanted to just move authorization of the town manager to apply for said grant. Anybody else got a comment? Second. I'll second. Okay. I just, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask the manager if by any chance his communication with um, Ms. Boyd Brummel was, was prior to any deadlines and that your letter was a confirmation of, of a telephone conversation before the 15th? Yes, it was. And the 15th was, was a holiday state holiday and they had extended the deadline and uh, I, I was also very concerned about sending this letter before I had council authorization but uh, I recognized that if you didn't authorize it, I could send her another letter saying uh, oops uh, <laughs> <laughs> the council said no but I was more concerned about meeting the deadline right, than I okay. was about having to send an oops letter. <laughs> Does that mean oops the manager goofed? No the manager no. got a little ahead. No. That's no I think it's good. I like that initiative. It's been moved and seconded on item 120 that the manager be authorized to apply for a coastal zone management waterfront action grant. All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, six to nothing. We call them We don't want to make them all the same. Item 121 to consider authorizing the town manager to apply for a Recycling grant and take any necessary action. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Is my is one of my memos to you indicated? Uh, the state has given us a real tight deadline for participating in this program. The legislation recently passed, and in fact, the state just started explanatory uh, meetings on this program a, a little more than a week ago, and they're continuing to begin to explain the the pr program. I think their last session is on uh, January twenty fifth up in the county with a with a deadline for applications February 12th. Uh, they do require that uh, the project submitted be regional in scope uh, and they will not entertain projects that involve a, a single community. Uh, went to a meeting over at Regional Waste Systems, uh, well it must have been a week ago now, at the time I get confused with all the different meetings. Uh, but it was, it was about a week ago, and Regional Waste at that point, uh, Chuck Fauche, the Executive Director, as well as Eric Root, the, the Deputy, and Bob Ganley, the Chairman, indicated that they want Regional Waste uh, Systems to get into the recycling business 
uh, lock, stock, and barrel uh, because they feel they can accomplish economies of scale uh, as well as the fact that uh, it helps them to better understand and control uh, the flow going uh, into the plant, uh, looking at seasonal variations and uh, otherwise uh, trying to see the best effort. Uh, we have had another recycling committee, which is a subcommittee of the Main Street 90 committee that has been uh, extremely active and is very, very interested in us beginning uh, an active recycling program. Uh, my recommendation to you this evening is that you uh, authorize us to participate in a regional application uh, submitted by regional waste systems. I've had a number of conversations uh, in the last uh, few days with Carol Eisenberg, who is the recycling coordinator, coordinator at Regional Waste Systems, and uh, she thinks uh, Cape Elizabeth is, uh, is uniquely uh, qualified. Uh, that sounds like an ad for ABC. <laughs> but is, uh, is, is in a great... Why are, we, why are we uniquely qualified? Well, we're, we're, we're in a great position with our transfer station operation to uh, serve as a model for establishing recycling programs in the rest of the region. Uh, we're a fairly small community and yet also fairly central to regional waste. And uh, she thinks uh, we could really uh, develop a decent program uh, working with them. So in, in summary, I'm disappointed we, that I'm not recommending that we apply for an individual application. But I think reflective of what the state's uh, direction has been from their level and the willingness of regional waste systems uh, uh, to uh, work with us. Uh, at this point, I would ask that you, will, you authorize uh, me to work with regional waste systems to develop a Cape Elizabeth element to uh, their recycling application. If that does not work out uh, as well as we might hope, uh, there'll be a second funding round uh, for these grants in July, and uh, we'd relook at the situation at that point. Councilor Cogshaw. I'm concerned about our, our losing some autonomy in a recycling program and being able to maintain our uniqueness if possible and have each cycling program be individualized for a community and perhaps scheduling could be something they could coordinate. But is this going to bind us in any way financially to an overall program or there are, I think there are a lot of questions about submitting this as a regional yeah. grant. There are a ton of questions, and regional waste is not prepared to answer them. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, the, in my mind, the, the timing of this is, is way too tight. Uh, it's, you know, running full speed ahead on, on too many burners at the same time. And uh, you know, I wouldn't mind because of the regional waste system's lateness, because of the legislation's lateness, and because of the earliness of uh, the state trying to get their recycling program up and running at, at the quickest possible situation, we, we're just going ahead when, when there are, in my mind, too many questions. Uh, but, I'm, I'm, but I'm reluctant to get left, left off, uh, get left at the altar when uh, something else is going on. We've been trying to get you to the altar. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to leave you there. I can hear the <laughs> comments. Well, I, I just have a, a little bit of a concern. I mean, we have uh, established a Main Street 90 committee, and they have uh, been working diligently in a variety of directions. One is recycling. Uh, I'd like to hear from them, basically, uh, their input uh, with respect to uh, their ideas, um, you know, how Cape Elizabeth is unique with the research that they've done. Uh, I don't know how soon that could happen, but, uh, you know, with all this urgency going on, is it possible to coordinate uh, the two so that we don't lose sight of the, uh, the work that's being done locally? Yeah, that's exactly what, what the plan is, is to take the recommendations they have thus far made in, in terms of what we should recycle and to work that into the, into the regional plan. But I agree with you. It has I, not been discussed I, I at the would, council level. Yeah, I, I don't have uh, any. I'd like, like to just comment on that. That there's still a lot that a local committee could do in terms of public awareness and selling the idea of recycling. We're not going to get left out in terms of our particular component. All that's happening here is that on the state level, they're saying to apply for these grants, you have to do so regionally. And we do have some precedent in that we've gotten together with our WS and the other communities for the stump dump and for the demolition. And there, are, there were a lot of things to work out, and we did manage to work them out. So I do feel there's some precedent. Though I side with Michael completely, it's a rush job. There's no way I, I feel Cape Elizabeth should be left out of this. Should this 
should, should this somehow connect. So I, I, I am in favor of authorizing the manager to have us participate regionally. Council Amaral, I believe you had your hand up. Oh, you I didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Council Greenlaw. I'm wondering what kind of impact this has on our basic commitment or contract with RWS about the amount of waste we guarantee them on an annual basis. And if we take some of that out for recycling, are we still going to be able to meet our tonnage requirement? We, we don't exactly have a, a specific tonnage requirement. What we, what we have is a requirement that we direct our waste their way. Uh, by, by working, it's a flow control ordinance. By working with them on this, we're, we are therefore assuring that we continue to main, maintain uh, uh, the faith of that agreement. But your regional waste system understands that you know, coming within the agreements is also the new state law that, that indicates that we have to recycle in a couple of years 25 percent of our waste. And you know, I think the percentage grows over a number of years to 50%. To, uh, One thing I'd really look to, to do uh, with this grant and work with regional waste uh, is uh, the fact that we, you've already authorized us to participate in the Gorham uh, Ross grant. I don't know exactly what they're calling the facility now, but they've changed it to a better name than Stump Dump. But uh, <laughs> the, with, within that, you know, and I, for use for this grant, is we really have some, some real issues of how are we going to get our demolition material uh, to that site. And this is one of the areas uh, that, that I've discussed with regional waste systems uh, of working with it to, to arrange the uh, roll-on, roll-offs, and uh, uh, the other transportation. Bob Malley, I should mention, also stuck around to at this point in the meeting in case you do have any questions on any of this and uh, uh, aspect and you know w some of his information on recycling. Anybody else? Yes, Council Reno. I'm wondering if the possible scenario it seems would be that if it's a regional grant we're looking at 25 percent recycling then on the regional basis it wouldn't encumber Cape Elizabeth to necessarily recycle 25 percent would it be done counted on a regional basis and that's why there may be advantages to go through RWS or disadvantages I can't say one way or the other I think that's you know that's going to evolve as, as they look at the state legislation uh, Sherry Huber's taken a position let's not fiddle with the legislation the first year mm -hmm. uh, right now it, it indicates that each community has to reach that target mm -hmm. but it's something the you know since they are encouraging regionalism Bob Malley and I were discussing it today and uh, we feel that under that, the state 25% rule includes uh, the returnable bottles and includes leaves and includes the chipping we're doing, uh, the newspapers. We are, we're probably already at the 25% level. So it, it really the question is of how do, we, how do we better recycle the materials we're already recycling and how do we head towards the 50% level? That's going to be the real challenge. Would this involve, right now, our newspapers that are collected at the facility, I still call it a dump, are not directed to RWS, are they? No. No. So, but in the, if conceivably in the, with this kind of grant and recycling on the regional basis, they would go to RWS? Conceivably, but not 100% guaranteed. Do you remember, Bob, in the, the agreement uh, on, the, on the, the demolition handling agreement, whether or not we excluded newspapers or, or if we guaranteed them to regional waste? I believe we guaranteed them, but presently we take them to rich insulation in North Wyndham. Mm -hmm and they grind them up for a blown insulation. Okay, thank you. Bob, while you're there, what do you think about us participating regionally? I really think it's the way to go. I think that, you know, working with the recommendations from the Main Street 90 Committee, um, and we should see, I haven't attended one of their meetings, I will be soon, to find out what their approach is going to be, but I really think we should do it in conjunction with RWS. Um, they can, my, as the manager says, they can coordinate uh, some of the transportation may be for us, which is, may be a big problem. And uh, I really think we should work together in that aspect of it. Okay. There's a new twist for our newspapers and whatever now. Down to the trade show, agriculture trade show in Augusta, they now have a shredder and they bail them up and use them for bedding for horses, and cattle, and what have you. So, Maybe we get more money that way than we cut up the riches. Well, Rich is also there. working on a program for the beddings for, for chicken houses. Yeah. So it's 
they're expanding the markets that way. It uh, bothers me that uh, they're in such a hurry up job and we've been doing so much of it now. But when we really get, they really get going there, all the stuff that we're going to recycle here goes to IWS? It has to be channeled through them. Uh, Whether it actually goes there or not. Yeah. I thought IWS wanted to do all the recycling and you just haul it there and let them do it. They have since bypassed that deal. Huh? No, that's still what they want to do, but they, their, their plans are still evolving. Yeah. So we don't know exactly. It's, it's a floating plan right now. Consolatory. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we authorize the manager to apply for the recycling grant, participating with other members of the region in the, in the RWS grant. <coughs> second. Been moved and second that we ask the manager, our director manager, to continue to work with RWS as far as the recycling program. All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Six to no. 122, to consider the appointment of an acting town manager to serve during the upcoming vacation of the town manager and take any necessary action. You want to explain that, sir? No, just I wish it was sooner than the dates indicated. <laughs> <laughs> and longer. <laughs> Nice. It may be if you keep goofing <laughs> up like that. <laughs> I don't want to see you left at the altar, though, so you're good for that. And the it's offhand political <laughs> comment you made on the previous night. <laughs> I was very careful publicly to. Uh, <laughs> One of the best comments. letters he has ever drafted. That's right. <laughs> sure. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to move. <laughs> We appoint as acting town manager for the period March 14 to March 21, Deborah Pizzo, and for the period March 22 to March 27, Gerald Daigle, in the absence of our esteemed town manager during I'll those days. I'll second. Second it. All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Six to nothing. Item 123, to consider authorizing the town manager to sign a quick claim deed for Peter W. and Mary A. Kelly III for land and buildings located on 40 Warren Avenue, map U01, lot 15, and take any necessary action. What? Debra. Debbie's going to do this. We going to let you say something tonight? Turn your mic. So this municipal quick claim deed is in order for the manager to sign all past and current real estate and taxes have been paid on this uh, property on 41 Avenue. That's all you have to say. That's all I have. You heard the recommendation, Council Cargoshaw. I move that we authorize the town manager to sign the quick claim, claim deed for Peter W. and Mary A. Kelly III for land and buildings located on 40 Warren Avenue. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any other comment? All those in favor of the motion? Raise your hand. Those opposed? Six to nothing. Last is citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. If there's any citizen out there that wish to have something to say that we haven't covered this evening, stand and be counted. If not, I would. Mr. Manager, Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Manager, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. Do I have a second? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Are we talking about the end You're of the done? Before? Well, our camera is not standing.